Hi, everybody. Uh, I guess it's recording, so let's start this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, today, we have multiple things to the agenda. In fact, we have quite a lot of things to the agenda. The first thing is regarding the mirror infrastructure, the current states. So um, I contacted the serverian.com uh, mirror maintainer, and he told me that they had some maintenance plan um, with the red. So I'm waiting for some feedback from there. Um, so until then, the mirror remain disabled. Um, still on the mirror topics, the ham chart to deploy mirrors is now ready and it's working. Um, so right now it's deployed on, I think, mirrors that are azure.mirror.jenkins.io. So basically you just run Helm uh, Helm install with a path with a link to the um, to the Helm chart, and then it will automatically deploy a nursing server, an HTTP server, and a cron job that will uh, regularly, like every five minutes, synchronize with uh, one mirror provided by parameter. Right now, we are targeting the OSUSL mirror, but um, yeah, this is something that can be easily changed in the future. Um, what I would like to have is I would like to publish that and version the mirror so we can start asking contributors to install that mirror. Um, if they don't want to run on Kubernetes, I mean, that's fine as well. Everything is explained in the, in the hand chart so they can easily adapt uh, the service. Um, but basically, we, we start to need more mirrors. Um, I had a look, look to the map and it would be useful basically to have more. So I would like to, to I'm planning to start working on a, on a blog post or something like that um, in the weeks. But basically, almost everything is there. Um, regarding, yeah, that's, that's basically any question regarding that topic. Yeah, sounds like we can continue then. Um, the second topic is about um, maintenance on infra.ci and release.ci. Um, so basically we want to switch to the ham. So we are using the ham chart for the Jenkins ham chart in our infrastructure. And we are we would like to switch to version three. And because there are some breaking changes uh, in the configuration, uh, we need to plan that upgrade carefully. We shouldn't have major issues, but yeah, still um, um, still be ready to have those two environments down. Considering that we was, have, yes? I was just gonna add, did you want to possibly delay that by a day based on um, Daniel's comment about delaying the weekly release? Yeah, that was exactly my, my point. Okay, uh, sorry. That. Yeah. So okay, cool. basically, we initially plan to do that upgrade tomorrow afternoon, but because of the weekly release that is delayed right now, uh, we'll probably do that on a Thursday um, afternoon. Um, yeah, I still have to announce, I sent uh, an email on the mailing list. It should not affect uh, users, obviously, um, because it's only concerned release.ci and, and infra.ci. But uh, yeah, still, because we will have to delay that, that upgrade. Any question? Next topic um, is regarding CI to Jenkins.io. I was looking at that instance today, and I was thinking, couldn't we use to get up label filter to filter, uh, to, to stop building every PR for Jenkins core. So this is something that Garrett introduced on infra.ci, so using the GitHub label filter plugin. And so basically is if you specify a label on a PR, we stop building that PR. Um, and I think it could be useful for still um, PRs uh, on the Jenkins CI um, on the core, on the main Git repository. Um, before I sent an email on the dev mailing list, any suggestions here? Oleg, Mark? I think it sounds, I think it sounds like a good idea. Um, I know Tyler has, has been of the opinion, hey, let's just close the PRs, but the behavior has not been to close PRs. Therefore, being able to mark them, this should not be built, at least accommodates current behaviors. So yeah, so we had different opinion about closing or not closing PRs until now we never closed PR. So that's why I'm, I'm suggesting this ID. 
And the idea is definitely to stop building, um, to, to stop run jobs on PR that don't have active VTV um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. oh. So you want to measure activity, or maybe we could just stop building everything which is not related to LCS. Interesting. What? How would how would we do that? I, I think that's a, a keen idea. Is there a way to decide which things are 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 related? Yeah. So for LCS, so there is an into LCS label. We can just uh, use that. And at the same time, I'm not sure whether it uh, provides the desired behavior. So does that mean that we would stop testing PR that target the weekly releases? Uh, well, we have CI Jenkins. Oh, so we are talking about CI Jenkins now, right? Yes. About yeah, then yeah, it's not relevant. OK. We could use a stale bot and uh, in stale bot just uh, disable uh, auto closing functionality so that it just uh, marks uh, pull requests as stale. And then uh, you use this label to disable the builds. Yep. So we would use, so we would use uh, the stale bots and the GitHub label filter. The stale bot mm -hmm. would apply the, the labels and the plugin would nudge trigger the job. Yeah, okay. it's uh, the most uh, straightforward approach. Yeah, I totally agree I, with yeah. that. I like the use of, yeah, Stalebot. I think that's really nice. So so forgive my not knowing Stalebot. Does that, it's a, it's a bot that will look for if there's been no activity on a pull request in a certain period, it then marks it as stale? Exactly. It's, it's not just a time-based thing. It's not saying a PR has been open for six months, therefore we close it. It's rather six months and idle for some period. Uh, yes. So it has uh, support for marking the things still and support for auto closing the things. So the latter uh, feature would rather advise against it. Uh, but yeah, uh, still label could be used. I guess I guess the I guess the periods still need to be defined, especially for LTS PRs. But uh, yeah, that would be already a nice improvement, and we would stop building um, again and again and again. So, so I but sent, yeah. Olivia, you you see indications on ci.jenkins.io that rebuilds of Jenkins core PRs are a significant burden on the on the processing. The ones I had seen were acceptance test harness, which was quite different. You're, you're seeing even core PR, the 60 or so that are open right now, they are a real burden on, on CI. So, Jenkins. So, the, the, so I'm looking right now at Cianda Jenkins.io and those PRs are gone, but several hours ago, I saw, um, I saw that we were building uh, ring jobs for the PRs on Jenkins core. Um, okay. Thank you. So that's, that's, that, that's why that's why I was investigation some option. Excellent. And and what you're proposing sounds great to me. Yeah. Also, the same approach could be applied to, uh, to plugins by default. Yep. I'm not sure about uh, enabling stale bot globally, though. It may make sense. So basically, uh, yeah, I have to see if because obviously uh, using that the um, that label that label approach for Jenkins score is quite easy because we don't have a lot of configuration to change. In if we decide to go with the every plugin for every plugin, um, maybe it will be easier to first convert CI to Jenkins.io to a GCASC uh, configuration before doing that. So we are or we already have the GCAS configuration for infrared CI. Um, Garrett worked on that over the past weeks and it's working mm -hmm. well right now. Um, so yeah. Uh, is is this I didn't think the JCAS configuration was deployed yet. It's defined and being experimented with but not yet deployed. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thanks. So it's not, so sorry, it's not, so we have component for CI the Jenkins.io, we did some tests. So basically Tim Jacob did, uh, did um, some work um, several months ago, maybe almost a year ago now. Um, we already have 
GeneCast cast configuration for a lot of components, but maybe not uh, for everything related to CI the Jenkins area. Next topic um, is about building a custom Jenkins Docker image with plugin installed. Um, so this is something that we've been that we've been talking for quite a long time. Um, we have quite a lot of components in place because of um, the work done by Damien to build Docker images to simplify the build and test Docker images. Uh, I think it would be nice to to move forward this thing as well. Garrett made a small CLI to um, automatically update the plugins that um, Jenkins, that the plugins that TXT filed. So um, I don't know if you can do a quick demo of that. Um, so I put the link to Garrett's GitHub repository. That That's pretty simple and, and I mean, pretty efficient. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, I don't have quite a demo, but I have, I can, I mean, I can talk about it briefly. Um, okay. it, it tries to, um, it looks, it looks at update center and tries to pull in what it believes are the next um, or the, uh, the updated plugins. Um, it seems to work quite nicely. Um, it, it obviously it's quite dependent on the version of Jenkins that you're running. So you can pass in a path to the Docker file and it will try and best guess the version of Jenkins if you're using LTS or not using LTS. And if you've got a version in there, it can, it can extract that out so it knows exactly which URL to call um, and just updates that. Um, I'm working on a just a, like a POC repo at the moment to try and simulate like a sort of depender bot style update with um, with a GitHub action to try and run it, um, which I should have finished quite shortly. Yeah, but, uh, at some point yeah. uh, there was uh... I'm not sure. Renovate uh, bot uh, supported uh, plugins TXT. Yeah. If I recall correctly. So basically, you implement it, uh, re implement it as an action. So, do you see my uh, terminal locally, my screen? Yes. Yes. So, basically, the, the, the CLI that Carrot made is quite simple. Um, and so, you can specify the plugin that TXT that you want um, to update. You specify the Jenkins version that you are targeting. And based on that, um, it um, queries the update center URL and then show you what are the plugin version available for that specific um, Jenkins version. And then, obviously, we can commit um, that uh, file to the Git repository and so on and the new images. So, it's, I mean, the binary is quite small, it's uh, like 11 megabytes. and um, yeah, it could be easily integrated in our workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this uh, tool basically takes uh, versions from update center. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the later you could uh, use a version which uh, takes the data from bill of materials. Um, but yeah. I think that you could what you could take information from uh, from the bill of materials. I mean uh, Jenkins plugin bomb uh, when the plugin is present there. But uh, yeah, it's rather nice to have. For... I, I've added a command uh, called check, which should um, go display any um, that we know about. That seems to work. So if you if you run rather than UC update, if you run UC check um, with the same arguments, it, it providing you've got a fairly recent version of that binary, um, yeah, it it tries to match everything in the plugins.txt against the vulnerabilities that come as part of update center. Um, I think so, I have the logic correct. <laughs> so the, vulner, the vulnerabilities report that it's doing is based on data from Update Center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, the Update so Center if, provides a it provides like a list of I suppose vulnerabilities, some plugins, and then it it, it gives you a couple of regular exp expressions, and um, like a last version. And I think I'm interpreting that. It had a few issues with uh, GoLang and regular expressions. 
because that uh, I think it's a slightly different format of regex, but it seems to be working. So if I, just to be sure, if I define a plugin that has known security issues, pick one and, and it, I run the check option, it will, it will give me a warning text saying, hey, you have, you have specified a plugin which is, has known security issues. Yes, yeah. Okay. And it'll give you a link to the, like, it, it's in tabular format, so it gives you the sort of the ID, the plugin, and the link to the security advisory, mm -hmm. if we know about it. So what, it, what it doesn't do at the moment is fail. I'm going to add an option to make it like actually like exit, exit nastily if it does that. So you could put it easily into a CI system. Sorry, Alec, what were you going to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, it basically implements some bits of uh, plugin installation manager. And yeah. Well, and, and is this kind of thing something that long-term we might consider putting into Plugin Installation Manager? I, I know it would be different because it's Java instead of Golang, but Oleg, you noted that there is, there's, there's some potential for this to be needed in, in our Docker image context. Mm, well, uh, Plugin Installation Manager already does similar checks. It can oh. even generate uh, plugins txt for you, um, and in theory, it uh, can increment the update plugins txt. So okay. the problem is that um, yeah, it's a separate tool in a separate language. And, and, you also need, and, you, and you also need the Java, and you need to be running the tool from the Jenkins instance. Not necessarily. Um, when I, I added the flag, which also supports the Jenkins version, so similar to how Garrett uh, did it. So it uh, can also be executed in a standalone mode right now. But yeah, this is a Java tool. It's uh, heavy, so. Right, okay. Okay, thanks for that. Um, the next topic is about the weekly release. As we already mentioned, it's um, the weekly release is slightly delayed. Um, will probably happen tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that's. Um, next topic, the LTS release. Mark, I think you put that to the agenda if you want to. I, I did, uh, just as a warning that some of the regressions that are included in 2.263.2 may be significant enough that we'll want to do an out of order release. It's not a known yet. This is definitely not a, oh yes, absolutely. It's rather just a, a hint that we may over the coming days or weeks decide that there is enough in the, for what will be in 2.276 that we want to include those into an out of order LTS release. Thank you. And finally, the latest topic, um, which is about the contributor summits. Um, so first them is in two weeks, three weeks, in fact. And we are interested to, to organize a small con a contributor summit, basically a virtual contributor summit. Maybe Mark, you can add some more information here. Yeah, so the idea is that we'd like to take advantage of virtual to do a combined meeting session first, where 60 to 90 minutes, probably in the European late even afternoon, or you know, think think sometimes between three and six p.m. European time, so be Switzerland time and Belgian time, uh, roughly there to do an initial startup session, uh, where we invite everyone who will be part of it. Then we break out into separate sessions <clears throat> with time zones focused on meeting the needs of the people in that subgroup. Those subgroups might include documentation. I think they should include infrastructure and platforms and uh, several other top pipeline, I think would be a good one. Of course, it depends the, which subgroups actually form, depends on who attends the session and who's ready to assist. Then after those subgroup sessions happen, and those could happen over a period of 
a day or two, then we would do another concluding session, bring everyone together for a, a, a very fast review of results. Um, my intent is to send a, a proposal for this today out to various places and invite people's comments. Likely Thank dates, you. oh, go ahead. No, I, I, I just wanted to highlight that um, the reason that we bring the the reason why we want, we want to do the contributor summits uh, around for them is because we usually took advantages of the fact that everybody was at FOSDEM, or at least a big big amount of people. Um, the thing is, because this time it's a virtual event, uh, we want to take the opportunity to gather together, but we don't have. Um, constraints, uh, physical constraints. So we, we can split the event on multiple days. Um, so I think that's why that's why we wanted to identify sessions and obviously infrastructure will definitely be part um, of the topics there. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what I want to add. Um, we cover all the different um, topics uh, of the agenda. Um, so any last thing you want to bring here? No, I think we are good then. Um, thanks everybody. Thanks for your time um, and see you later. Bye-bye.